Hi. In light of the recent reports that Benedict XVI is planning to rehabilitate the archheretic Martin Luther sometime in the fall, I think it's important to remind people exactly what Martin Luther was all about. Of course, Martin Luther endorsed the blatant heresies of justification by faith alone and scripture alone. He rejected the Catholic priesthood. He was excommunicated by Pope Leo X. But here are some particularly interesting quotes which illustrate just how evil and how heretical Martin Luther actually was. This is from the book History of the Popes by Dr. Ludwig Pastor, volume 12, page 215, and it has some of the quotes from Luther. Pastor writes, quote, about a pamphlet which appeared in March 1545 by Luther, which was entitled, Against the Papacy in Rome, Founded by the Devil, end quote. So that's what Luther called his pamphlet. Luther went on to call the Pope, oh, I'll read Pastor, he says, the chief ruler of the church is here spoken of with wearisome iteration as, quote, the most all-hellish father, his hellishness, and styled juggler, the ass-pope with long ass's ears, desperate knave, the destroyer of Christianity, Satan's bodily dwelling place, the devil's apostle, the author and master of all sins, Roman hermaphrodite, and pope of sodomites, End quote. So those were the titles that Luther gave to the Pope at the time, Pope Paul III. And Benedict XVI is planning on declaring that Luther was actually misunderstood and was not a heretic. I'll continue with some more quotes from Pastor's analysis of what Luther wrote and did. Pastor quotes Luther, who says, quote, Let the emperor and the estates of the empire tell the vicious, scandalous knaves and the cursed dregs of the devil at Rome to go to hell forever. Luther also said that people should extirpate, quote, the devil-founded papacy. Luther said, first of all, take from the pope, Rome, and all that he has as a pope, for he has with lies and tricks, ah, what I say, lies and tricks, he has with blasphemies and idolatry, shamefully filched, robbed, and robbed from the empire, and trampled them underfoot, and therefore he has led to their reward in the eternal fire of hell, countless souls through his idolatry and destroyed Christ's kingdom, wherefore he is called an abomination of desolation. Therefore ought he the Pope himself, the cardinals, and all the rabble of his idolatry and papal holiness, to be taken and as blasphemers have their tongues torn out from the back of their necks, and nailed in rows on the gallows, just as they attach their seals in rows to their bulls. Yet what a trifle is this compared to their blasphemy and idolatry? Therefore let them hold one council, or as many as they please, on the gallows in hell, deep below all devils. End quote. So this should shed some light on how immeasurably evil Benedict the Sixteenth is, and how astoundingly evil this action of rehabilitating Luther will be, and how evil anyone who thinks that Benedict XVI is not a heretic after seeing these facts is. This shows us again how those who defend the Vatican II Church and Benedict XVI are not defenders of the papacy, but defenders of an arch-heretic, one of the worst heretics in history, who is a complete enemy of the papacy. Those who defend the Vatican II antipopes and Benedict XVI and Vatican II are defenders of Protestant heresy. Also, one of the most frequent questions we get is which priests one can approach to receive sacraments in this difficult situation, and we have a section on our website which sets forth certain guidelines on that issue. In that section, we point out how one may approach certain undeclared heretics who are validly ordained and offering a traditional form of liturgy provided those undeclared heretics are not notorious or imposing about their heretical position, and one does not agree with or support those individuals in their heretical position. However, a good example of a priest who would be a notorious heretic, whom one could not approach for the sacraments, would be a priest who would agree with Benedict XVI's rehabilitation of Martin Luther, or would not be opposed to it. That would be an example of a priest who is a notorious heretic, so open, so forward, so unconcealing about his rejection of Catholic teaching, 
that he should not be approached for Holy Communion or Mass at all.